I'm going to make a video explaining the WGL League, its players, and the teams that are playing in it, and some of the tactics used, the tanks played, and uh, some other things, just general small details. With, uh, so first, first things first, we're talking about the NA, the NA League, what teams are in it. Uh, well, there's Elevate, Eclipse, Dare Rising, Top Tier, AM60s, 07 Gaming, Valence, and Rival. Unfortunately, Rival was relegated this season for being the last place team, but they played really well, and generally the, the, ro the rotation sequence is uh, the... 8th place team, which is Rival, was relegated, and that spot goes to the 1st uh, this place team in Silver League, and the 7th place team has to play a relegation match against the 1st place team from the qualifier. Right now, each team has 10 players, 7 starters, and 3 subs. Uh, generally, your starting players are obviously going to be the, you're going to put your best foot forward, and the, those are going to be your best players, and the, the bench players are obviously are going to be very good, just so if you have a problem with one of your starters, you can just stick them in and they won't really have any issues. But most teams generally have seven starters, and they'll have like a coach, uh, which isn't really on the roster, but sometimes they're just, you know, there to help you out. And that's pretty much how the league works as a structure wise. Let's talk a little about the tanks for a second before we move on to the next portion. Uh, the the format right currently is seven fit, seven sixty eight, which means that there is either six tier tens, one tier eight, or five tier tens and two tier nines. Most teams generally don't really go for the two tier nines thing, but you can do it as it can be some as it can be advantageous on some maps. And let's talk about some of the tanks that are used in WGL. Uh, looking at a list here of the most played tanks, uh, one through five, I'm just going to talk about the the most the top five and then a little bit about why the top five are used. So for, first things first, the bat chat obviously has the most games by far, over 19,000 battles in League. Uh, this is because the bat chat is just one of the strongest tanks in the game. I, in, in my opinion, probably the best tank in the game. It is fast. It has a good alpha. Da it has good alpha damage at 390. It's not. It's middle of the pack. It has uh, good penetration values, 260 on APCR. It's very fast. It has a it has a magazine. It has very good camo. It can spot. It pretty much does everything that you would ever need. In WGL, you only have seven players, so and, and the ability to find an isolation and take a tank out, especially very quickly with the magazine loading tank, is very, very good. The Batchet has a is a very good tank to fill that role. It's pretty much brought in every map, either in a scouting uh, thing or a or a pushing aspect. The second the second tank is the AMX 50B, another very fast magazine loading vehicle. Uh, with very high penetration values on its APCR shells, it has about 1,600 burst damage. It's pretty much brought it not much any not that much anymore, um, but it was brought quite a lot because of its 1,600 damage burst. It was usually brought in pairs so that way you clip out an, a tier 10 pretty much by itself, and it was very good against heavy tanks. The next tank is obviously the mouse, and one of the newer tanks that has been kind of a staple of the WGL. Uh, a tank but has 490 alpha damage, very accurate, has very good damage per minute. It also has 3,200 hit points, which cannot be uh, ruled out. The tank brings a lot to the table. It's a very hard tank to penetrate. They just can't pen you, and you can do damage to them pretty much every single time. The mouse has really become a staple of WGL, and for some people that's a good thing, and some people that say that's a bad thing. Uh, in my opinion on it, I think it's okay. I don't really have any grievances against it, uh, although I think it is a little bit too strong. Next tank is the IS-7. The IS-7 is another one of those mobile tanks. It's not that mobile compared to like a 50B or a Batcha, but it is mobile enough. It's more mobile than a mouse. The tank's turret is pretty much impenetrable. Uh, it has decent DPM, but not great. The gun is very inaccurate, but it has high alpha damage, and it has an APCR shell premium, which most tier 10s don't have, making it very strong at shooting at long ranges. The IS-7 is generally used to hold corners, hold down, or to poke over ridge lines for information without really taking any much, without taking that much damage. Lastly, we're going to talk about the 113, a tank that is that I personally like a lot. It is very quick, has a high penetration, premium round, it, and it has a very strong turret. Along with the whole armor, the, the whole armor was buffed recently, the 120 upper plate and the 120 side millimeter armor. It, it can do very well at running down other medium tanks. It's generally brought in a lot of open maps, such as steps and proc, and sometimes on mines. I like the tank a lot. I think it has a lot of potential, and uh, I could, you could easily see why it is in the top of this list of number five. So let's talk very briefly about Himmelsdorf and how the league actually plays in battle and what you're actually seeing when you watch a stream. So right now I'm look, we're going to look at the map Himmelsdorf, which is which is probably one of the most uh, iconic maps of the game. It's one of the most it's one of the more original maps. Uh, the map the map is generally played. Uh, it's a little bit. I think it might actually be attack favored. I'm not exactly sure. I don't remember the actual details. But I like to playing the map personally a lot. And let's just talk about the map for a minute here. So if you look at the map. Uh, just uh, here, you can see that it has a zero-line hill. This is actually a hill. 
you can see from the top, it is actually a raised area of the map. So generally controlling this from the attacking side is very good because you can control down the D-line and also get shots into here, over here, and tanks that are kind of like on this two-line. You don't really get render any. You, the render circle here, as you can see, this yellow circle, is generally does not go that far out if you're on the hill. But generally controlling the eight-line is, is something attackers do in the beginning. You can either attack the one cap from the two-line, or you can go down the eight-line and attack two cap, or you can come off the hill. Uh, the defending team usually can't, usually sits up over here. Sometimes they like to play. Sometimes they send tanks down the one two line to be aggressive, but most of the time they generally don't do that. Most of the time teams now, especially in the mouse meta, they'll sit a mouse here. They'll put it something in the train station. They'll put a tank over here and have some tanks over here. We're gonna watch a we're gonna watch a little bit of, a little bit of gameplay footage from this match we played against AM60s. Just Let, let's pick up the action here. So right now you can see that we have cap pressure almost at 30 at 30 points. So you can see if you look at the map, our 1390 is on the on the on the one cap, and we have pushed up to the courtyard to the three line, basically boxing the enemy team into the into the top left corner of the map. I'm holding the five line in my T110 E4 to make sure that any of the tanks that were on the other line cross. This batch is going to be a plan. Got a pretty lucky fire on him. But anyway, so as you can see, we've, we've kind of boxed the map off into the point where the enemy team is kind of stuck in one location and any rotation would be punished by sight lines. This game is, WGL is all about creating crossfires and creating lanes of fire where you can draw the enemies into them and punish them. Uh, th this is generally done by either putting tanks in a position where they have no choice with the cross open areas, like what we did with the cap, by pr pressuring cap, or by taking positions quickly at the beginning of matches to get early damage off. Well, let's talk a little bit about Cliff for a little bit. This is an, this is one of the more open maps that I was talking about. This map is generally played with a lot of bat chats, as you can see. Pretty much every single attacking team brings at least four to five bat chats, and defending teams do the exact same, with the exception that they usually bring a TVP or an STRV. Um, so generally, the way the map is played is that there are two main positions that are pretty much key to victory. You either have the donut or the nipple or the middle hill, or you have the mountain on the top, the the lighthouse. Uh, these two positions are pretty much key to winning the game, you, but you can't, the, the way the map is designed is you can't control both of them at the same time, generally, but you can do it in a way where you can cover each other. So most teams will either go up like this and try to control the mid and the lighthouse, other teams might try to go up into the donut, into the middle, and try to control the donut. There are obviously negatives to doing both, but generally, you want to do either one or the other and not split your forces, because this is a map where an enemy team, who's, which is played correctly, can easily punish you for being out of position. So in this next part, we're going to talk about how quickly these battles can actually end. So here we're playing against 07, and as you can see, the tanks die so quickly in this format, especially when the Batchat has this magazine loading gun. And as you can see, just with one clip of two Batchats, two of the enemy Batchats are now dead. So the game is pretty much already over at this point, and from this point on, the 07 is pretty much completely, completely wrecked in this game. They really can't do anything. They've lost two of their tanks. They've lost a lot of HP on other tanks. And they can't. They generally can't win. Uh, other games like CS:GO and uh, Dota, generally you can make things happen with low HP. Like especially in CS, when you or it's like a one v four or like a one v five, those things can happen. But in World of Tanks, these things aren't not really possible. Uh, generally, if you are down tanks, you will generally lose the game. If you're down HP, you'll definitely lose the game. Uh, World of Tanks is not one of those games that has a very a very high comeback mechanic, which I guess can see why people don't really like it for that much. However, the game generally is more about tactics and positioning. I'll kill myself. Alright guys, I hope you like this video and smash that like button.